this is going to be a little bit different than usual. Now, because this video has a sponsor, it's sponsored by NordVPN, I took this as an opportunity to do something I wouldn't usually do. I often do reviews and I have a Patreon that supports that, but here, no, no, no. This was a chance to do something a little bit different. And I needed to go to Ikea, so I thought, why don't I go to Ikea and just buy all of the coffee things and review them and then give them away. So let's see, what does Ikea have? And ultimately, is it any good? Grinder, 22 pounds. Is that real? Is that actually product? Organic dark roast coffee. We're not buying. We're not buying that. 27 pounds. 27 pounds. It's a big French press. I have high hopes. We've got the all important metal pour over set. Can't forget little carafe metal filter. The Herd. Herd? Herg. Herg Madig. It's 40p. I'm going to get two. 40p. Is that? There's a stovetop brewer. Sold. You know what, why not? So let's see what we have today. Okay, we've got a couple of French presses. We've got like a little, got a little glass guy, and we've got a chunky, chunky little uh, metal one, which is good. In amongst the other stuff, we've got like a travel thermos and a little travel cup. Oh, we've got a little hand grinder. Got a hand grinder. This thing, which is a stove top. Terrifying. Must all carafes be terrible? Let's find out. We've got some 40 pence glass cups which I don't even understand, but we've got those. We've got some very, I don't know, Ikea-y kind of cups here going on. We've got some, uh, some nice little patterns and things. I need to drink out of something, you know? So that's that. And we've got this weird little kind of brewing pour over setup. And then, last but not least, we have the tasteful glass carafe slash uh, pour over thing. So here's the plan of attack. We're gonna divide and we're gonna conquer all of this stuff together. This is not going to be an in-depth review of each product. There just, there just isn't time. We'll answer the top line question, is this good? Is this bad? Is it worth the money or not? Nothing here is over 30 pounds. So it's all pretty cheap. So the question is, does it suck? Maybe it does, who knows? So we'll start by looking at the hand grinder. Then we'll have a look at the French presses. Then we'll do some pour over goodness. Uh, we'll maybe drink from some cups as we're doing those things and finish with a little bit of uh, mocha pot goodness. Let's have a look at this 22 pound grinder. We've got in here your classic set of what look like very plasticky white ceramic burrs. What I, what I will say, there's a little spongy bit on the bottom here. That's kind of nice. I, I guess that's to keep it nice and fixed on the table for when you're hand grinding, which is a nice touch. I'd be shocked if, yeah, that's pretty much it. The crush grind little burr set. Interesting to see, it says sort of crush grind. Oh dear. Oh, it's really plasticky. That's not nice to adjust. All right. Now this is a weird, actually just looking at it right now, this is a weird container to grind into as a sort of shape. That is just a bit odd. I can imagine coffee gets stuck in that. Let's just throw a little handful in. I'm not sure I want to grind this whole handful. Feels like a hand grinder. All right, let's have a look. Let's have a look, see at the state of this. So we've, we've gone kind of that medium, medium fine, I would guess. Okay, that's kind of a mess. I mean, that's a mess. These grinds are ultimately what I would expect to see from a cheap hand grinder. They are wildly variable in size. There's some pretty fine pieces here. There's some 
big old bouldery pieces too. I'm not gonna be grinding any more coffee with this because that's just a waste of everyone's time. 20 quid, you get what you pay for. And then we've got these things. We've got two French presses and they did this one in a, in a bunch of different sizes. I really only saw this in this size. This, this is the one that feels like you will break it within the first week, right? You'll just tap it on the kitchen counter by mistake and it'll be gone, gone forever. Super light, super cheap, not particularly into it on the face value. This little chunky boy, I'm, I'm a little bit into this. Like it's one of the most expensive things uh, in the whole run. I think it was 27 pounds. It is big. It's a good volume in here. It's dual walled, it's stainless steel. Um, it's not like a stunning quality here. Like the way that it's brushed at the bottom is very different to the more mirrored sides. Now in here, the plastic just feels cheap because it's cheap. As someone who doesn't really press French presses, and check up here if you want to see that video, this is kind of good. Like I, I, it will keep the heat. Let's get some coffee into it. Let's, let's get some water boiled. Let's get some coffee into it. We're gonna brew just a half liter in each one, which they can comfortably accommodate. So I've got 37 and a half grams of coffee in each. 75 grams a liter is kind of where I'm at for a French press. Try and make sure you get it all, you know, evenly saturated. Now I don't worry about thermal loss, but some people do. So uh, we'll leave the lid on, a little bit down. We're not gonna press, right? We're never gonna press. If you're gonna do this, you can just press it down until it hits the liquid and that's enough. Don't need to worry about anything else. So these, they're not gonna brew anymore. They're gonna just sit, hang out. The things, the fines will fall to the bottom. It'll be good, but they're not brewing. They're not extracting anymore. So don't freak out that I'm gonna make some coffee and not drink this coffee, okay? because we have to talk about these. These are the pour over options from Ikea and they're basically the same, but not. So you've got this setup, which is um, like a repurposed funnel. I just have no idea what's with the pointy bit at the bottom other than it's literally a repurposed funnel. And then they seem to have just stuck a little piece on here, sort of badly. Is that actually attached to them? Oh. I presume that's supposed to happen. You can put like a V60 paper in here and you've, you've got some ridgy type things that they have sort of made a small effort with. But it does come with this, which is what the other little glass carafe comes with, which is a metal reusable filter. Metal meshes, tiny holes, no need for a filter paper. Uh, these are, as far as I can tell, identical inside, with the exception of the outside. On the rim of the, this one, there's a little handle to help you lift it off. Like that. Apparently, if it's in a glass thing, you don't need help lifting it off. You just pick it up like that. Let's uh, let's make some coffee with them. Considering that this is identical to that, I'll not use this one. I'll put a paper filter in here, uh, and and I'll and I'll brew this as intended. Now this does have some markings on the side, right? Some some little lines. They haven't told you what they are. I feel like they're mocking me and you and all of us. Seriously. I mean, is it 100 mils? 200 mils? I don't know. I have no answers for you and I'm mad. Let's do well, like 20 grams to say a third of a liter. So I'm gonna brew this the way I would brew a V60. This is not just an excuse to make you go back and watch all my old brewing guides, but there is a link to a brewing guide up in that corner there if you'd like to click and have a little look. With metal, you'll need to grind just that little bit finer because there'll be no resistance from the paper. So the whole brew will happen a little bit quicker that way. All right, we'll leave you here to drain out. Let's put a filter paper in this and see how we go with that. I'll tell you this right now. I'm trying to rinse a filter paper in the sink. This is, this is a horribly designed brewer designed by somebody who has never used it or intends to use it before. When you stick a giant funnely bit through the bottom, what, what am I doing with this? What is, this is awful. This is awful. Now in looking for something to brew on top of with this monstrosity, it seemed a good chance to use this, the little travel thermos that came uh, from Ikea today. The, 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 the V60 paper does not fit this well. This feels like it's draining a bit slower than a V60 would. Um, I don't really know why. I think it's just, because this hates me and I hate it and we understand each other that way.
See, this sometimes happens with Chemexes, where the seal ends up being too good or something. I don't even understand. All right, enough of you. So, what have we got? Alongside our little travel thermos, we should also test our little travel cup, which is a pound. And don't you feel it when you hold this? So that's a pound. And then we've got our travel press. And these cups came from Ikea, so maybe they're good. I mean, it's metal filtered pour over coffee, which to me is entirely fine, if often a little bit muddy. Our big chunky boy, hot, clean, pretty good, really pretty good. Our travel cup. I'm not an entirely, you know, surface level person, but, but, you know, I'm not that shallow and vain, despite the hair. But if I was walking down the street holding this, I'd feel not proud of myself. This is, I mean, I feel like I'm drinking from a child's cup. I mean, it's definitely a cup that has a lid that is a pound. The fancy travel thermos. Uh, this comes with a special lid. So in theory, this is sealed right now, and then you would click it to drink and click it again to seal it. So in theory, nothing comes out. And nothing does come out, which is a great relief. And then we can open to drink. That's exactly as hot as a fresh brewed coffee in a thermos is. That's not a particularly good pour over because that pour over is trash. It's made of trash. I think it's just found metal in the skip out the back was sort of roughly shaped into a funnel and then I don't know. I just hate it. I just, I hate it. This I quite like. That's okay. This, if you need a little travel thermos, I don't hate it. I don't love the colors, uh, but it does not leak when you don't want it to leak. This I'm not that into. These cups are kind of fine. This has won my heart so far. Nah, not really. And the little, the little nonsense here. Nah, nah, I would, I would not. I would go and buy a proper one from someone like Hario or one of those other companies that do these and do them well. I'm not sold that the glass will be long lasting on this thing. There is one brewer left and that is the mocha pot type thing. I will need to do a little bit of a set change, get my induction hob ready to do that. And while I do that, I'm gonna tell you about the video sponsor, which is NordVPN, that has enabled this journey that we've all taken so far. Now NordVPN are actually the service that I use as a VPN. And I like a VPN for a few different reasons. Firstly, it adds a layer of privacy to your activity online. It would mean that someone like your ISP couldn't see your traffic. More than that, for me, it acts kind of like an ad blocker, preventing me being tracked across the web in a way that I just don't like at all. Now, as someone who travels a lot, being able to act like my laptop is in whichever country I want is actually super useful, not just for watching whichever version of Netflix that I fancy that day. It's also incredibly useful if I'm somewhere like China where there's a firewall that would traditionally stop me accessing the services that I need every day. Now, if you're curious and you wanna try it out, use the link in my description down below and you'll get 70% off a three year plan. There's 24 seven customer support and there's a money back guarantee too. Thank you so much to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to the coffee stuff. So we return to, to do the, the, the mocha pot type deal, which is kind of interesting. Now I had a pleasant surprise, a quick test. This is not aluminium and it works on induction hobs directly, which is great news. So to uh, the bottom of this, we're gonna add our hot water. If you look up there, I bet there's a video about how to brew with a mocha pot that I helped make. That would be good. So coffee, not tamped down, not super finely ground. Get that all. Tightly locked in against your gasket. Little handle, I'm, I'm not against this so far. There you are. So we're brewing. So a quick rinse with cold water just to stop it brewing and we have coffee. This is our 40p little, little glass thing. I'm not gonna pour a lot of coffee here because one, it's strong and two, it's hot. I'm a bit conflicted that it works on induction. I think is a super big win. I think that's great that it works on induction. I think it's ugly as, I think it's ugly. That's pretty ugly, right? That's not, that's not a beautiful thing, but it's cheap. It works on induction. Uh, it seems reasonably well made. The handle I like more than I feel like I should. And if you use it right, 
you get a nice cup of coffee out of it too. So this is a kind of medium endorsement. If you don't think this is hideous, it's not bad. Uh, it's, it's really not that bad. Before we wrap, there was one more thing. There was a carafe there, and I wanted to know if all carafes are bad carafes, and if a cheap IKEA carafe was a bad IKEA carafe. Does it pour nicely? <laughs> no, it does not. I mean, how hard is it to get a spout to focus liquid? Look, look at this, look at this. Who wants liquid to pour like this? Who is signing this off? What are you doing? Ikea, you disappoint me. If you want any of this, if you wanna enter into the little giveaway, if you're subscribed to this channel, click the link below and you are entered into the giveaway. Uh, it's very simple, there's no catch, there's nothing else. I'll ship this stuff anywhere in the world and if I've not been kind about the stuff that I'm shipping, I'll give you a little bonus in there too, something fun. Overall, <sighs> disappointing. Dis I had higher hopes. The, the winner of the day, by quite a long way, is the IKEA Chonky Boy French Press. Uh, pretty good, actually. This, this is the only thing I will regret giving away or feel some level of sadness or, or miss it in any way. The rest of it, a kind of mixed bag, okay, to just awful, uh, but there you go. That's what happens when you go to Ikea and you buy everything they have that makes coffee and you test it. And now you know, and I've done this, so you don't have to. Now, do you own any of this? Are you already an owner of the Ikea coffee equipment? Have you thought about it? Are you tempted by some of it? Let me know in the comments down below. Let me know your thoughts. I hope you had some fun watching this. Uh, there's more serious, sensible and useful coffee content coming very soon, but I will say thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day. Bye. With me if you ride with me, you can slide with me if you feel like 550 on the fast stick, you can get high with me, that's a deal, right? Ride with me if you ride with me, you can slide with me if you feel like 550 on the fast stick, you can get high with me, that's a deal, right?